All right, guys, so today we're going to go over some map knowledge for customs. I'm going to show you guys some unique spots and also talk you through how to kill people who are on like the second floor areas. A lot of times people tend to think that, you know, there is only one way up, right? And that's not true, right? You have multiple avenues of approach that you can take. And if you understand that, you're going to win a lot more fights. Uh, the guys that end up shooting us in the first video, uh, we were actually trying to kill a, a pistoling or a hatchling or something. I don't know what it was. And then these guys engaged us. Uh, they actually don't make it out of this one. <laughs> no surprise, right? But the, uh, the funny thing is, is there's a third party, which I think actually was the, the pistoling, ends up killing the secondary player from the initial engagement. So kind of funny. We're probably not going to play all of that. We're just going to show you guys some, you know, kind of interesting uh, flanks, I guess you could say. And then I'm going to talk you through why we're doing what we're doing. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoy this video, and uh, we'll see you in Raid. No, I hit the wrong button. This person who's engaging us right now is using an M4. He's using M855. All right, bro. A1. That's why he didn't kill us. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna kill both of you. Gotta get down. We're in the middle of a firefight, and it ain't working. So, as you guys can see, using my map knowledge, we were able to jump up from that box into the actual train and hit him from an area that he would have never predicted. That's the difference between someone who understands maps and someone who is just going in for the kill. That guy tried to thirst us, and he paid dearly for it. Don't be that guy. All right, boys and girls. Imagine. Well, right now we're listening for any other movement. We're not hearing anything. So now we're gonna move to another area and flank. Unfortunately, we're getting third party. Or is this fourth? Probably a fourth party. If you guys didn't know, you can hold control and use your mouse wheel. Peek again, bitch. And it will bring you up and down through your like your stances. That's why we're able to look like we are right here. See your gun, dude. So we're throwing nades to push him out of there or to possibly kill him. We're getting shot from someone else.
dead body there. So that dead body was killed by one of our nades. As you guys can notice, we're clearing through. We're going to clear the whole area before we loot bodies. We know that there's one more that we need to kill. And we're actually going to hear him get engaged here soon. Which will clear up the rest of the area for us. There's never reason to rush to loot. You're not missing out on anything if you're dead. We're looking for different angles to try to hit his buddy if he's trying to loot his friend. And we are actually going to hear footsteps and it's going to be whoever kills first guy's friend. See, we did a momentary pause to listen for any sound. He's using bad ammo. I'll take this just in case. So as you guys can see, we're in no rush. And that's why we're going to live. Because the faster you move, the easier you are to spot. And on top of that, the more noise you make. His body's still there. I don't know if he's got shit on him still or not. We heard someone run through. Alright guys, so a little context to the story of what's happening in the second clip. We hear an engagement in new construction, and we assume it's boss cab. As we are approaching, we start to receive fire. Immediate reaction when you return, or like when you're when you're taking fire, is return fire. So you guys will see me dump a 50 round mag into that general direction because we're suppressing. We want that guy to get his head down to allow us to move forward to close on to the enemy, right? If we can locate him, now we're closing, we're going to destroy. That's that's the Marine Corps motto, the Marine Corps rifle squad, all right? We're locating, closing, destroying. That is exactly what we're going to do here. Now, where these guys mess up, gentlemen, is they are going to actually stay all on the second floor. The person who initially engages us, we end up killing with a grenade. I'm assuming he is their command and control, i.e. the leader of the party. And when we kill him with a grenade, you will start to hear the players, his friends, who are holding the stairwells instead of moving downstairs to gather intel and counter flank me, they actually end up running from the fight, trying to reposition, but it's already too late. They've given me enough time to get to an area where I could hear their movement from above. I can hear them on the wood and we're able to do what, you know, we do. Learn from their mistakes, guys, because if you're running in teams, there is not realistically strength in numbers if you're not a well-oiled machine. You need to be shooting, moving, communicating. If you're not doing those things, you're just going to die, right? These guys outgunned me three guns to one, right? They had the ability to move to new locations, and they didn't do that either. Remember, you need to be unpredictable. And if you're in a team, you have to work well together. Ugh. Ah, which one do we pick? We're going to go this way, of course. We're gonna go left, and then we're gonna come in. I think that's the play here. You're gonna die, mother trucker.
There's at least two. Truck you, Scav. <laughs> oh no! Oh lord! Anyone else? Imagine. Alright, let's clear it through. So as you guys can see, uh, a few small things they could have done to improve that would have been those two initially pushed down, right? They were already on the first floor. They would have known where I was at, and there wouldn't have been this happening to them, all right? Um, you got to think about these types of things when you're in scenarios. So, like, in the military, we have standard operating procedures, right? So, based off of what kind of contact you take is how you react. And these are just base guidelines for what you do. If you're working in a team like these guys were, the best thing for you to do is to understand how to react when someone's engaging you, right? Initial response should be to locate the enemy, call them out, and then your teammates should be moving to flank, right? Because in combat, you only have, if there's one person firing at you, they only have a set of eyes that can look directly at you, right? they aren't going to be paying attention to flanking and they may not even hear you flanking them if someone is providing suppression fire, right? If I was to play in teams, which I don't, I would make sure that I provide suppression fire while giving call outs to accurately give my teammates the ability to flank and kill. Or in my older videos, you'll see I used to play with someone called Wi-Fi and same things we would do with him. I'd be like, fire, you know, give me some suppression fire and then I would flank and kill people because that's exactly what you would do in real life. And it doesn't change how you would do stuff in this video game because this is a video game, but it is very similar to real life. You have something to lose in this game, just like in real life. So if you treat this game as though it is real life, you may win more gunfights, you know, within reason, obviously. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, make sure to leave a like and then leave me some comments. Tell me what you would have done better and or, you know, let me know if you actually learned anything from this. That would be awesome too.